Hey guys, my name is Marina. I'm 32 years old and by this age I was able to build 11 income streams. In this video I'm going to talk about how hard it is to maintain them. How big of a team do you have to have in order to be able to have all of those income streams and how passive they actually are. Because I'm 32 right now and I'm like, you know, I have two kids. I want to live a slower life. Maybe I want to spend more time with my kids versus working all day. In this video, we're also going to talk about what happens if I stop working tomorrow, how much money I will still be able to make. Let's do it. And this video is not made for me to brag about having passive source of income. This video is to inspire you. If you don't know our story, we came to the US back in 2015. We had a startup back then and we were lucky that we were accepted to one of the accelerators here in Silicon Valley. And this place definitely inspired me to be diversified. This place inspired me to try new things because you just see people doing all this different stuff and uh, you're like, what happens if I do the same? The first source of income is YouTube. I have three YouTube channels, including this one, and you could call it passive, but it's actually not. I create videos once a week for each channel, which means three videos a week, and I also create short videos, and I get paid for it. YouTube pays me around twenty to $25,000 a month, but I have the whole team that helps me with production, editing, uh, coming up with topics, reviewing comments, reviewing analytics. But what I really wanted to show you here is that you can create evergreen content that would keep generating revenue for you. Let me show you how YouTube can be a passive source of income. So if you look at my analytics, and this is my Lingua Marina channel, number one cash generating video is the video that I made back in 2018. Last month, it brought $448. So what it means, if I stop producing content tomorrow and decide to retire from content creation, I would still have videos that are evergreen that would keep generating revenue for me. And if we look at top 10 videos that I've created, this one was created in 2020 and it generated $440. These are the most recent ones. These are 2022, 2022, this one, 2018. $247 last month, 2020, $230. And this long tail goes on and on and on. If you just scroll through all of my uh, cash generating videos, a lot of them, I would say more than a half of them would be from the previous years. And what I keep saying to all the YouTubers, if you start creating content, think of your media library as of your asset because you can retire, you know what we can do with this content? We can repurpose it to other social media platforms, which I'm gonna talk about later in this video. But I think having three channels, if I decide to retire and stop producing content, in a year, YouTube would still generate maybe $4,000, $5,000 a month with me doing absolutely nothing, which is kind of amazing. So if you've been thinking about going to YouTube, long videos is the way to create this passive income for you for years to come. By the way, in this video, we're gonna talk about four buckets of incomes that I have. Bucket number one is related to content creation. Bucket number two is education slash teaching. Number three, business. And number four, investing. So with content creation, we just talked about YouTube AdSense. The next income stream is TikTok. So we just talked about YouTube AdSense, number two, creating short videos. And what I like, again, about short videos, we currently post them on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube Shorts. And the same content generates income across three platforms. So we don't really have to create three different videos. Now, with YouTube, you're part of the Shorts Fund and it's included in my AdSense revenue. Number two is TikTok, which brings several hundred dollars a month. I could potentially retire from TikTok and ask my team to repurpose the existing content, not sure it's the best strategy because I would probably be able to generate maybe like $100 a month um, and I would still need to pay the team. Number three, Instagram Reels bonus, which is kind of cool. Instagram started paying you for views on Reels and I'm doing this experiment uh, where I'm trying to post uh, a Reel a day. But again, the maximum right now is like $1,000 and it's not passive at all, so you have to post by yourself. But again, the thing is, you create one piece of content, it goes to YouTube Shorts, it goes to TikTok, and it goes to Instagram. Number four here, Billy Billy. Billy Billy is actually this Chinese YouTube and they have incentive program. I can't disclose the numbers, how much they're paying me, but they pay really well. And again, what is kind of cool about that type of income, we just post the same content that I post on YouTube. That's it. I have an assistant uh, who's Chinese. She's helping me translate thumbnails and titles. Again, guys, this is to inspire you. When you create long form content, it can live on several platforms. 
without you making new content. So repurposing and finding the right people to help you with that if you decide to like fully retire, that's the key. The next income stream, Facebook. So on Facebook, again, we can just post the same videos that we post on Instagram and uh, TikTok and YouTube Shorts and also YouTube long videos. The only thing you have to pay attention there is that your videos are one minute or longer. So we sometimes need to add extra frames if we're creating like a TikTok with just 59 seconds. But anyways, what I wanted to warn you against here on these social media platforms, they are very unreliable, especially like Facebook. They have this thing, if you're Russian, you can't monetize on Facebook. I am Russian, uh, but um, I've lived in the US, I'm a tax resident here, but they found some phone number that I probably had when I registered Facebook back in 2004, whatever, and they demonetized me on Facebook. And they don't really have support system. I tried reaching out, I'm still demonetized, so I would just put a question mark here. And this story should teach you that you can't rely on one platform. You can't rely on one source of income. This is why content creation is only part of what I do. And uh, business and education, number two and three, they are also super important. Just because, you know, I don't want to be dependent on the platforms and their algorithms because they can change tomorrow. Or tomorrow they decide that if you hold Russian passport or any other passport. 2022 has just been a crazy ride for me learning about this stuff, how to not be dependent on just one platform. So my advice to you, once you start creating content, also think about collecting emails because this is what you can own in terms of owning your audience and creating a product. When talking about building income strategies, I think it's really, really important to talk about the mindset. And I know this hustle culture is everywhere and this is how I got here. I hustled. In your 20s, you hustle. You work and work and work and work. But what I realized, being 32, <laughs> is that you need to slow down. And when I started working with like my emotions, I realized that this willingness to try everything. Like I see someone doing a movie. I'm like, oh, do I need to do a movie? I see someone starting a business in e-commerce. I'm like, do I need to try that? I see someone doing a Netflix show. I'm like, I want to try that as well. And you can call it several things. You can say, I'm excited about experiencing a lot of things. I'm excited about making more money, etc. What I realized that over a period of time, it makes me feel kind of bad about not being able to accomplish everything. And I started thinking like, what is this feeling? What am I feeling? And I realized this is actually greediness. I'm kind of greedy to make more money. I'm kind of greedy to experience more in this life. I'm greedy about the emotions that other people experience. And after I realized that it's greediness, I'm like, okay, this is actually not the best feeling in the world and I need to be able to tame it. I need to be able to like understand, okay, Marina, this is you being greedy and it's impossible to get everything. And it's also really important to live a life. So when you start building those income streams, only go for the ones that you're actually passionate about. Like what is your passion? What is the best value you can give to this world? Because we only have one life and we can waste it, you know, doing a zillion things just because we get excited. So if you find yourself in this trap where everybody's doing everything and you want to try everything, limit the amount of exposure. Unfollow people, stop watching movies, stop hanging out with friends who are like doing this, this and that. Just focus on whatever you want to do. And again, social media is super distracting. So when I'm in the mood like, oh my God, everybody's doing everything and I'm not doing everything, I just go off Instagram for several days and you can't, and yeah, this is coming from content creator, hi. But I think it's really important that we focus on our true desires. And in 22, unfortunately, one of the best ways to do it is to stop following people on social media for at least a couple of days and see what happens. If you're thinking of starting a business or selling an online course, this information is for you. Everyone keeps saying, and I keep saying that myself, if you want to start a business or a course or anything, the first thing you need to have is an email list of your customers. But how do you collect them? There is a platform called system.io that can help you with that. By the way, if you're starting a small business and have less than 2000 contacts, you can use their forever free plan. This plan has very generous limits, up to 2000 contacts, unlimited emails, unlimited students if you create a course. And yes, you can create a course with their forever free plan. And you can create a workflow, an email campaign, and so much more. And believe me, this is a great deal, especially if you're just starting out. When your business starts growing and you exceed 2000 contacts, they still have affordable plans. For example, $97 a month for an unlimited number of contacts. And by the way, for some of their competitors, $97 a month would be the entry price for like 
couple hundred emails. They offer free migration from any other service that you're using right now if you buy their unlimited plan or if you buy their annual subscription. By the way, you can get 30% off their annual subscription right now. Their interface is very easy to use. For example, you can build a sales funnel in under 30 seconds with just three clicks. The same goes to a website builder. Use their proven templates to drag and drop interface to create a website in minutes. By the way, system.io has a very generous affiliate program where they pay 40% monthly in recurring commissions to their affiliates. And they have an also a dedicated webpage on their website where they tell you how to promote them easily. Try system.io with their forever free plan if you're starting a business, if you're thinking how do I collect my customers' emails, or if you're launching a course. The link is down in the description below. Let's talk about number two, education and teaching. The easiest product you can create are consultations when you do one-on-ones. I used to do them, this is how I started, uh, but I stopped doing them just because I felt that I could bring more value to thousands of people by saying the same in the videos. So I was like, okay, if people are asking me pretty much the same questions they were asking me about GMAT and uh, getting admitted with a Fulbright scholarships, I was like, let's create a PDFs, let's create workbooks. Let's create workbooks for English language learners. So I hired a team of professional teachers and we created those uh, PDFs. So 2.1 will be PDFs, workbooks. Now this is truly passive income. You can create campaigns, you can run ads, and you can automate all of that. Right now I probably make $4,000 selling workbooks and the best part, I only pay customer support team to get back to emails. The product is out there, you upload it on a platform and it sells. This is the best type of product because it lives by itself and all you have to do is figure out marketing and figure out customer support. 2.2 courses. Now these are harder to create because you need methodology, you need tutors, you need um, email funnels, you need the platform. Like there is so much going into course creation and I know a lot of people Sometimes people think like, ah, oh, creators just create a course and blah, blah, blah. It's actually a lot of work and not all of the courses are that profitable. But once you create a course and you create a team around it, you can make it evergreen. So I think if I retire, I would still be able to make maybe like $3,000 here on workbooks and probably $5,000 here on courses. And by the way, from all the content, if I decide to retire tomorrow, probably I would say, let's say $4,000 a month. I don't really know. I don't want to experiment with that in the nearest future, but this is what I think. Another thing actually comes from Tim Ferriss's four hour work week, batch your tasks. So today's Monday and Monday's my shoot day. This is when I shoot three videos and two short videos because this is when I put my makeup on and dress up. I have a special day when I have calls with my team. I have a day when I have external calls like podcasts or meeting people, hanging out with startups. I have a special day for office work and I have a special day for webinars and classes that I teach. Batching tasks is the best thing you can do because otherwise you can get too distracted during the day if you switch from one task to another. Number three, business. Now this is the best ever. Just because if you create a product that is not dependent on you, and when we were creating LinguaTrip, I was really involved in like marketing and everything. But then in a couple of years, um, I was like, let me stop promoting LinguaTrip in all of my videos. And I stopped for a couple of years because we wanted to build a system that is not dependent on me as a creator. And initially it didn't depend on me because we started a business back in 2011 and I only started my blogs in 2015, 2014. And that's the best, it's a big team who knows what they're doing. My husband runs this company and I already experimented with fully retiring uh, from the company when I had my kids. So to every content creator out there, or if you're like, what should I do with my life? Building a business that doesn't depend on you is the best thing you can do. But a full disclaimer here, I've never seen a person who's like 100% not doing anything in the business. You still need to be on the board. You still need to be there when crises happen. But in general, if we talk about like content creation, creating educational content or business, business will be the most passive if you decide to retire and if you build the right system. Okay. Delegating. Oh my God, guys. I know like I'm talking to so many people and they're like, oh, I don't know whether I should hire people like I've never hired before. Please try outsourcing something. The first hire should always be your personal assistant. When I had this thought of like, should I hire my first person? 
I was doing everything myself, but every day I started asking myself a question. Could I delegate this? Like I was translating people's documents for visas. Could I delegate this? Absolutely. My first hire happened back in 2012, but till this day, I keep asking myself the same question every day. Can I delegate it? Would it be worth it? And if the answer is yes, I try to hire someone. So if you're willing to build truly passive income sources, please start to learn how to hire personal assistant as a first hire and also build systems. Create task lists, spreadsheets, so it's easier for you to hire and manage your team. And number four is investing. This year has been rough. Most of my portfolios are not profitable. The one that's profitable, I think it's like yielding 1% a year, but this is a crazy year. Because I'm a long-term investor, my hopes are that in 10 years, if I decide to retire with my current portfolios, I will still be able to generate some income and this will be like 100% passive. Uh, my only task is to just rebalance portfolios or hire someone to do that. And because I'm in this mode of thinking like, let's hustle less, let's live more, let's live a slower life, let's enjoy. My goal this year is to create two more passive incomes. And by that, I mean buying real estate. I'm still debating where, and I'm still calculating my cash flow. So I'm still learning. And you probably saw a video where I showed you what 1.5 million gets you in Silicon Valley. It's just crazy. And strategy number two that I've already started working on is startup investing. I don't really have any hopes here like I know it's super risky but because I live in Silicon Valley and it's just this culture here of supporting young entrepreneurs investing in risky things let's see where this brings me in 10 years and what's gonna happen so this is also another passive income strategy that I'm working on this is the hardest one it's very easy to say yes it's really hard to say no and there are many psychological reasons for that. We want to be liked. We don't want to make other people uncomfortable. We're thinking that we're missing out on opportunity, but believe me, you have a very limited amount of energy and time and uh, you should focus on what you're truly great at. We recently had lunch at Apple's office and there's this quote by Steve Jobs that says, if you're doing something that is good, you need to stop to focus on something awesome. And it's all about finding your superpower. It, I mentioned delegating. I mentioned trying to find where you can bring the most value. This is what Steve Jobs talked about. And I know it's really hard, but I know it's easier said than done. As, as, and as a person who is again, super greedy for everything, I wanna try everything. I created this rule for myself. If something that I do generates income, but I don't really enjoy it, I learn how to delegate it. And uh, I try to delegate so it's passively existing without me. Like at first I wasn't too excited about TikTok, so I taught my team how to create short content there for me. But if something that I'm not excited about is not generating any income, I just stop doing it. No matter how other people tell me like, oh, you know, selling products on Amazon is the best. I know it's not for me. And I've tried selling like a physical product and uh, we were barely break even on it. So we just stopped. I love that product but I wasn't too passionate. So saying no, stopping good projects in order to focus on the awesome ones is another role. Oh, another income stream related to content creation is affiliate marketing. And with affiliate marketing, you basically promote products in your videos or on your website. And when somebody buys using your link, um, you get some revenue. This is kind of passive, but it doesn't generate a lot of revenue. And I think if I fully retire, that would probably be like maybe extra $100, but not too much. If I'm being optimistic and uh, hoping that things stay as they are right now, so we still get AdSense revenue, we still get monetized on TikTok, we still sell our courses the way they sell them without me actually promoting them all the time, I think I would be able to make from 15 to 20K from the content that I've already created, from the courses that I've already created and from some of my investments. I'm not talking about my business here because again, with the business, my strategy is always invest back into business because when you're investing, I like to be controlling things and with the business, you control them. Uh, so with the business, my strategy is like, yes, I could pay myself higher salary, but why don't I just hire the best people and uh, the best teachers to create the best product in the world? Like this, this is my strategy strategy with the business. And the last thing that I've learned, copy others. Most of the things have already been tried by other people. And it's not about like blindly copying everything. It's about getting inspired. Like we have this community of people who talk about English on YouTube. And uh, if you're in this space, you understand that a lot of big creators 
somebody comes up with a topic and we're like, oh, that's a great topic, like 50 common phrases, let's all do 50 common phrases. Or somebody came up with, stop saying thank you. And everybody makes the same types of videos. It's not like we blindly copy each other, but we get inspired and we create our own content using the topics that perform well on YouTube. And this is what I teach on my YouTube course. Like if you see your competitor doing something and it performs well, do it. It's just sometimes we're like, I want to create something unique. I want uh, to create something that's not in the market. And this could actually be a trap. First of all, you can create something that's already on the market, but it's just too small because the problem is too small and you just didn't realize people don't need a product. And sometimes you think, oh, I really want to create something new uh, that never existed. But the thing is, the problem here could be that the problem is too small and there is no demand for what you're creating. So it has to be like truly innovating and you need to test. And this is, yes, this is how biggest companies are created like Google and Uber. But if it's a small business, I would think twice if your space doesn't have competitors. So that was it for me for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video up to the very end. I really hope that I wouldn't have to fully retire and I would still keep creating content. And I think as a woman, like this is the major difference I see between my husband and I is that I'm always thinking about plans B, like what happens if, what happens if, uh, what happens if, what happens if, he's always like all in. Like this business is gonna be a $1 million company. I don't want to start anything else. I want to be all in on this one. So this is the way we are. I don't know if it's like female male thing or it's our personality types. But again, as I mentioned this year, I would focus on more passive income strategies. And of course I'm gonna share them on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss my next videos and uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.